All right, guys, this is going to be a pretty quick video. It's going to do a quick video on the C6 transmission for Ford. We're going to go over bushing placement, um, snap rings, a few other things, just um, some tips and tricks, stuff like that. So starting off, you're going to have on a basic C6, you will have 10 bushings. And this is the setup for a two wheel drive unit. You're going to have the tail housing bushing. It's long and has some grooves cut in it. Make sure you pay attention to where that goes in. Then three pump bushings. This will be for the center of the pump. These two go in the stator. They are different. You'll have one that has a cutback groove that goes on the bottom of your stator. And then the double twist that goes on the top of the stator. You will have two rear case bushings. One will have... Um, fluid cuts, one will be smooth. Make sure the notches on the back one face out, notches on the grooved one face in. Grooved one goes on the inside, the smooth one goes on the outside of the case. You're going to have two bigger bushings for your, four, or for your third and reverse drum. This one goes on the inside here. This skinny bigger one goes on the opposite side. Um, I would show you bushing installation, but obviously we've already changed all the bushings out. Um, for some reason I only have one of these, but it takes two. These are for your sun gear. One goes on the top, flip it over, one goes on the other end. When putting these in, be very, very careful. There are holes inside of this sun gear. Do not block those holes off. Some bushings go flush, some get countersunk. This bushing gets countersunk. These two in the sun gear get countersunk, but only to a certain extent. Don't block the holes off. Your two in your stator get countersunk. So your cutback gets countersunk about an eighth of an inch. The spiral gets cut, sunk in about an eighth of an inch past the taper. Your pump bushing will be flush. Your case bushings will be flush. Um, another note, the case bushing for the E4OD works just fine in the C6. It is longer and one bushing. Looks a lot like this one. And you can use that. That will work just fine in the C6. Another thing, if you're doing a full rebuild, make sure you get a, a good rebuild kit. Um, I prefer Made in the USA. Always has good stuff. Also, get yourself a good metal washer kit. Um, comes with all the washers, metal washers you need. And there's multiples of each kind because they are selective for different thicknesses. So this will get rid of all of the plastic inside of your transmission. The only plastic I would ever recommend reusing would be your selective pump um, space washer. And that's only if it's the thicker kind. If it's a one, two, or three, definitely don't use that. Um, and also depending on your horsepower level too. Another thing, the aluminum four pinion rear planet. This one is just fine for most applications. I've even seen these in the diesels and they do just fine mainly because it is driven by these outside tabs here. So it's a lot more meat to grab onto, spun by this drum. This is your input. This only has three pinions. And it's a lot weaker because it is aluminum like the rear, but it gets driven by these splines right here. If you're anything over the 400 horsepower or torque mark, and it's a heavier vehicle, you absolutely need to upgrade this. Um, I would go with the steel one. This transmission, um, we're under 400 on horsepower and torque, and it's a lighter vehicle, so that will do just fine. Now, your metal ceiling rings. Your three non-closing larger ones will go on your governor, the governor housing on the output shaft. Your two larger locking will be on your stator, and your two smaller locking will be on the back side of your forward clutch drum. Now, if we go on to snap rings, you have a multitude. The biggest snap ring is going to be for the case on your low and reverse pistons. This is your smaller size, so I guess we'll go largest to smallest. So that's for low and reverse in the case. Next size down, not much smaller than your biggest. So these are pretty large, so three of these. One will be here for third and reverse. Two will go in your forward clutch. One down here to hold your wafer plate one above to hold the top of the clutches. You'll have one of these. That's your pressure plate. Goes in the forward drum. 
you will have two larger apply plates. One goes forward, one goes third and reverse. Moving on down, your C-rings. You'll have a large C-ring that goes here for your forward on top of your wafer plate. You'll have two other small C-rings, very small. Those are your holds for your sun gear on, your, on the sun shell itself. You have, next size down, two snap rings of the same size. Those are going to go for here. Doesn't matter which one, they're both the same size. So, moving on down, we have this guy. This is going to be right here on your output shaft, and that holds the output shaft in the transmission. There is another one, a little bit bigger than this, and it goes here to keep the governor housing in on the output shaft. So that pretty much, ooh, forgot about these two. You'll have snap two snap rings that look like this. This is the larger one, you'll have one a little bit smaller. This holds the spring cage, the larger one for third and reverse. The smaller one with the wider spring cage goes in the rear of the case for low and reverse. Low and reverse will have a lot of springs and they'll be smaller. You'll have 10 to 12 springs that are be taller. That's for third and reverse drums. Now, the next one I want to talk about, most shops and places you get parts from, they are honest and reputable. Now, I have seen a few places that definitely try to make more money on unsuspecting customers. They will try to sell you a little kit for the C6. It comes with a new race in the rear, your Torrington bearing here to replace the selective washer that goes on there, and a one-piece sprag. And they'll call it a low drag rear roller sprag. And they'll try to say it's some great upgrade and they'll try to sell it for some expensive price. Make sure you don't get caught into that. All that is is just a regular race that's milled down a little bit to accept the Torrington bearing. This one piece low drag sprag is literally the one way roller out of an E4OD. I'm not joking. It's from Borg Warner. It is the same part. Um, there are parts from the E4OD that will intermix with the C6, so, but that's all that is, so make sure you don't get taken for a ride on that. Um, case configuration, there is the first gen C6 big block had a round bell housing. Um, now when you start moving up, this one is an early 70s, so this has the big ears and the wider spacing on the two top bolts. This is for a big block. The small block the spacing would be a little bit shorter. And on the older big blocks that had the round bell housing and a few other configurations, they had what's called the uh, bastard shaft for the input shaft. This one's the standard. Same spline count on either end. The, uh, I, I've never heard it called anything else. We call it the bastard shaft. It actually has a different spline count on the portion that goes inside the transmission that connects to the forward clutch drum. So, make sure you watch out for that. Um, if you're intermixing parts, just be aware. I believe 75 and older, they started, they were using square cut seals. Anything newer than 75 or 76, 77, right in that era, they use lip seals inside the forward clutch drum. Make sure you look out for that. Pay attention to what seals you take out. Make sure you're putting back the same seals you did take out. When ordering your kit, um, make sure you measure the steels. If you're getting new steels, measure the steels that come out of your drums because most people that are doing this on their own in their garage, they don't know steels are selective. There's different sizes. So make sure you measure those. Um, your servo piston for your band, they are different sizes. Make sure you get the right size so you can tell by the letter that's stamped on the outside of the housing. So this one has a P, some have an S, some have an N. So just make sure that you are aware of that. That's the inner diameter down here, the size of that inner diameter ring. Let's see. As far as setup, we will go through, and I'm going to have a build video on this one. So we'll go through everything. Um, if you have to order new pump gears, Measure the thickness, because they do come in different thicknesses on the gears. And, um, that's about it, I suppose. 
So just be on the lookout. Make sure you order, you know, what is... Make sure you know that you're getting a good kit. Um, there are kits out there that aren't all that great. We'll get into all the valve body and everything else on the actual build Xero modifications that I did on this. And I can talk you through it. It's really easy. Um, not a lot that needs to be done to this to make it a really good unit. And... We'll go through band sizes. That one's obviously bigger than that one. There's a smaller band that the stock that was the stock band. Setting up your transmission, you can either go with thinner or thicker steels. If you're off by maybe thirty thousandths, you can actually take two clutches, shave off one side each, put them together, and now you've just added the thickness of just the metal part of that clutch to your system. Something we actually had to do with this build. If you have anything but a diesel, make sure you run the black stripe vacuum modulator. Most of the times your kit will come with a green stripe. So if it is a diesel setup, then you're going to want to give your parts supplier a call and see what they recommend. And pretty sure that's all we wanted to cover here. Um, just a few things to look out for. If you have to order a few other parts, make sure that there are letters or numbers stamped on everything so make sure you have all that information when you're ordering all of your parts um, make sure that when you're taking these apart you want to look on the inside here and you'll see where the teeth have been pressing into the actual ring gear itself and if it's starting to really press in and make indentations on this it needs to be replaced those do go bad um, also Check the inner teeth on your forward planetary. On both planetaries, make sure you're checking your actual pinions themselves, your up and down play, and then the cross play. If there's any cross side to side, you need to replace that planetary. Make sure you check on the shell itself where these C-clips are. This sun gear will actually bang into here and actually wear that out on the sun shell. That is a wear point. Make sure you pay attention to that. And your shafts. Make sure they're nice and clean. Um, 3M, Scotch Bright is your friend. Make sure you use it. Get stock in it. It is really, really good. And it helps a lot. So, other than that, I think that's just what I wanted to touch on and kind of get out there. It doesn't matter what transmission you are building, make sure you have some type of assembly lube. That is lube guard. Uh, assembly goo comes in multiple different colors um, they have doctor trans it's also really good if you're not going that route um, petroleum jelly from the store works just fine anything petroleum based nothing water based water based will literally destroy everything inside the glue that holds the clutch material on is water based glue so anything water wise in your transmission will make it come apart but yeah um if there's any questions, you can give me a call, or not a call, um, shoot a comment, I'll respond to it. And, um, yeah, this next video coming up will be the putting everything together, showing you how to set your clearances, backspacing, everything else. And then probably a separate video on the valve body and governor modifications, even though it's not a lot. A lot of people mess this area up, especially on a C6. When putting the valve body together, it has to be done a certain way, or you will mess it up. So, well, I gotta drink that coffee as it's nice and cooled down by now. Um, yeah. And we'll get to building this thing and get you guys set up on the tripod so you can see it. Follow along. So, uh, have a good day.